When it comes to octaves, playing the octaves, we feel insecure, we stress out, we freak out. And with these feelings, plus not a good mechanism and structure in the left hand, we will always feel these bastards, or in other words, octaves. So in today's lesson, I will explain and show you how I practice them in order to dominate and to feel more secure when playing the octaves. But before we proceed with this cello lesson, for the newcomers over here on this channel, welcome, I'm Ilya Laparev. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And for the people that already know me, welcome back. And I hope you will find this cello lesson useful and helpful. And talking about useful, I have a Patreon page where you can support my work. A link is in the video description below. And for 10 euros or $12 or nine pounds, you can send me any video recording of you playing, send it to me and I will reply to you with a video recorded masterclass in order to boost up your playing and to keep you moving forward in your cello studies. A few people are doing this already with me and they're very, very happy with the results. So again, link in the video description below to get access to my Patreon page. And now enough talking and let's go right into the topic that you have been waiting for, octaves. Octaves is part of the double stop family, which is great because by playing double stops, your left hand will gain a lot of strength, which is important in cello playing. So if you can or have the time for it, apply these double stops. So thirds, sixths, octaves, any double stops into your cello daily routine. But now comes the question, how, where, what, why? So for this cello lesson, I'm gonna use Saint-Saëns Cello Concerto, third movement, that famous moment where we have the octaves, right? And I will show and explain to you what must be done in order to have good, strong octave playing and also things that you need to avoid. And these demonstrations that I'm gonna tell today, you can apply this to anything, anything that has octaves. So scales, Dvorak concerto, Haydn, D major concerto, third movement, anything that has octaves. All right, and now let's check out that famous moment of the Saint-Saëns cello concerto third movement. <laughs> Okay, I just have played that famous moment in the cello concerto, but now comes the question. What is fundamental in octave playing? Anyone? One, two, three. The thump. The thump is your bass. So I highly recommend that you start to develop the octaves by playing first with your thump. Your thumb is the foundation, it's the fundament. It's like building a house. When you have a bad foundation and you build a house on it, the house will collapse. Once you have a good foundation and you build a house on it, then the house will stay stable. So the same thing here in octave. So your thumb is your foundation, your fundament. Once your finger is good enough, strong enough, then your octaves are gonna be fine. Because if your thumb is weak, then things can be wishy-washy or in other words, bad. Right, as this is the first thing that I want you to develop, let me show you how I would practice that. I will put a different angle so that you can see clearly my hand, how does it work. So we will start first with the thumb. <laughs> Good, and now that we have done that thing with the thumb, now we do the opposite way. We do with the ring finger, so on the A string, the upper string, okay? So now let's do this one.
Now we have played both separately, we can combine both. So let's check this out. Now we're gonna talk about common mistakes that many people do. Beginners, including advanced people, and even some professionals. So first common mistake here is the elbow. How to hold the elbow. So what I see often is that people hold their elbow too low. No, you cannot hold your elbow too low. I call this a lazy elbow or just, you know, hanging around. This is bad because when you're holding your elbow down, all the weight goes down and then you don't have a good precision here in your fingers because octaves, it's about the fingers. The fingers that you're using needs to be in focus. And when your elbow goes down, then you don't have precision. And when you don't have good precision, you know it already, bad intonation. Bad intonation is what? Everything gets screwed up. So this is very important. Hold it steady like that. I'm going to show you two examples with octave playing, one with a lazy elbow and the other one with a steady. And you clearly will hear and see the difference also. <laughs> Another common mistake here is that people often, when they play octaves here, they move their hand forward. But this has to do with the previous common mistake that I spoke about, about the elbow. When your elbow is like this, then okay, there is no structure at all. So then people, they recompensate by, I don't know, leaning forward or leaning too much to the back. No, this is all about steadiness. So don't lean forward. I'm going to show you again two examples from a different angle that you can see clearly what I mean. Because when you lean forward, your intonation is going to suck. When your hand is steady, then you have more chances to have a more accurate octave playing. <laughs> So the next common mistake that I often see from people, they somehow manage to play octaves with very curled fingers. So extremely curled fingers. I would go more for the flat fingers like that, rather than curled. I would say maybe not too flat, of course, and also not too curled. Everything in extreme is bad. Try to find a balance in it. Try to find what suits best for your hand, of course. Now I'm going to show you again two examples. One with extremely curled fingers and another one with more flat fingers. Something in between, all right? <laughs> Thank you. 
talking about curling. So, okay, we were talking about curling the fingers, but there is one particular finger that you absolutely cannot curl at all. Do you have an idea? It's the thumb. See, it's curled now. You're asking for bad intonation, bad foundation. What did we spoke before? The thumb is the foundation, is the fundamental of everything. Because if your thumb is like that, you're never gonna be able to play octave straight away. So instead of it, hold it like that. Like you would give a thumbs up to this video, for instance. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, just like in an octaves, and then you put it back. If you find this video useful, if you're finding it helpful, the tips that I'm giving to you, hit that like button, share it with your friends, the ones that are struggling with it. And then after that, you put back your hand on your cello and there it is. That would be a more better uh, position for uh, the thumb. So not curled, thumbs up, remember? So, okay, these are the most common mistakes that I find in people when they play for me or when I see them performing. Of course, we can find many more um, common mistakes, but okay, I guess nobody wants to sit with me here until tomorrow. Now, there's one more thing that I want to mention here in octave playing. Of course, we all know this is mostly for the left hand, but there is something that I can tell for the right hand also. This is a kind of a cheat code, or I don't know, you can camouflage some intonation, and this really helps a lot, trust me. So usually when we play octaves, these are double stops, right? So we play two strings at once, right? But what about if we focus more on the lower one? So where the thumb is. So I suggest you to do open string first. We take the lower, so let's say we want to play the octave uh, from Saint-Saëns, this one. So the most important, again, is the lower one, this one, right? So now we take the open string. So we're going to take the open string. And now we're going to add a little bit of the A string. So you need to find a balance into it, because if you play both strings very exposed, then your intonation is going to be very exposed. So when you're going to play a little bit more to the lower string and less the higher uh, string, then you kind of camouflage it. This is, well, I'm not sure if this is cellistically correct, right? But uh, who cares about being correct? The most important is that we don't screw up oct octaves and nobody is going to really hear it. Like, And we're not cheating because we're playing actually both strings. But focus more on the lower string. So let me show you this again. What you can do is to take an open string. So not too much. I don't want to hear too much the upper one. I want to hear more the lower one. So that's why I said before the thump is very important. Once you put all of that in practice, you're going to see that in no time, your octaves are going to be better and better and better. So that's it for today's cello lesson. I hope you found this lesson of today useful, helpful. And if you put all this into practice, you will see the progress by yourself. But remember, this takes time, patience and dedication. This doesn't happen overnight. So from tonight to tomorrow, no, this takes time, patience and dedication. So really apply them every day to your cello routine. Every, every single day, it doesn't matter, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, apply them every day. And with that, I want to thank you for watching today's lesson. If you enjoy it, that thumbs up like that. So hit the thumbs up here for this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and we'll see each other in the next lesson. Have a good practice and see you. Bye bye.